A website's hero section is often overlooked. So today, I'm gonna to show you what a good hero section looks like and how you can build your very own for your business. Coming up. What's up guys, Tristan Parker here, and I'm committed to helping you up your website design game and your business. Now I've done a couple of videos now on how you can produce your own website from scratch or how quickly you can produce your websites, but I've not really stressed on the importance of putting together that effective hero section or even how you go about building it. So that's what we're gonna cover today. If you're sitting there and you're unsure what the hero section is, Essentially, it's the main block at the top of your homepage. You know, you perhaps have an image in the background or it's a large title text. It's the first thing that visitors see when they visit your page. And the reason why hero sections are so important because when done correctly, they do a fantastic job of engaging your audiences and essentially retaining them and leaving them on your site for much longer. So I guarantee as a business owner, when someone visits your site, you want them to stick around for as long as possible, right? Unfortunately, statistics show that when someone visits your site, they tend to leave within around 10 seconds. Now, this would be because they are either lost, they don't know who you are, they don't know what you do, or they just outright do not like the design of your site and decide to leave. And having a great hero section will help fix these problems. So as I mentioned earlier, the hero section is the first thing a visitor sees. So we need to use this as an opportunity to answer any of the questions that they have when they visit your site. You know, we need to be answering the questions like, who are you? And we can do this just by clearly displaying our logo. The next question we need to answer is, what do you do? And we can do that just by telling people what we have to offer. And finally, we need to tell them what our value proposition is or how they as a visitor are gonna benefit from our service or our product. So I'm gonna show you how to answer all of those questions using your hero section. And we're gonna build it step by step in Elementor. And don't worry, you don't need the pro version either. You know, this is so simplistic that we can rely on the free version so you can take care of this for absolutely free. So let's move over to the computer so I can run you through it step by step. So here we have an empty page. It's just a blank Elementor canvas at the moment. Now we are gonna create a hero section that takes up probably the majority of the window. I think it's great when you have a nice impactful image and it takes the entire height of the screen. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna lay our information on top. So let's just get started. First thing we wanna do is head up to the plus and click add. And I'm gonna go for a two column block. And this is because I would like the text to sit on one side and the focal point of the image is gonna sit over on the right side. And I'll show you what I mean by that as we build it. So in order to add a background image to this new block that we've added, click the six dots right at the top. And then we wanna head over to our edit section and then click style. From here, go down to background type and click classic. Now here we have the option to add an image. So head over to there and click add. Once your image has loaded, you'll see it appear in the background of the block, um, but you'll notice that we can't see it. So there's a couple of tweaks that we need to make. So head over to position, and we wanna change that to center, center. And we want our background size to be cover. So just to cover what we've done here, we've changed the background size to cover. So this essentially means that the image is always gonna fill the space and keep its proportions. Also, we've placed everything in the center, so our focal point of the background container is gonna be right here in the center. So this just distributes the image fairly evenly. And depending on the type of image you're using, you can play around with these options. So for example, if you wanted to you know, change the positioning of it, you know, maybe bottom center, you'll see that the image is gonna move around. But for now, we just want it in the center. And you'll see that we can sort of make out a little bit more of what the image is supposed to be. Now, in order to get this hero section to sit full height of the window, we wanna head back to layout over in our edit section. And we wanna go down to height and put fit to screen. And there we go, now you can make out what the image is. You'll see that our image focal point is over towards the left and we're gonna have our text over to the right. Now let's start adding some text. And now to do this, we just wanna head back over to the edit section and right at the top with the nine dots, we wanna click that. And then it's gonna show us all of the widgets that we have available through Elementor. Now, at the moment, we're just gonna go with the heading because that's what we're trying to add. Now, this doesn't look ideal, so we just wanna style that a little bit better so it's a little bit bigger and quite a bit more visible. And I'm gonna change this to the heading one. 
So the reason why I've changed the heading two to heading one is because we're working with the hero section and we're defining our most important prominent header on the page. Now websites work in a hierarchical order and your h1 tag indicates that it's the most important header of the page. It's also good for SEO purposes, but I'm not gonna to dig too much into that during this video. Again, you'll see that it makes it a little bit bigger, but we still want that a little bit larger. So we can do that by going to style, typography, and this slider will allow us to change the size. And I want this to be fairly large, but first off, it would probably make sense to actually change the content in there so we know what we're working with. So I'm gonna go with, so size wise, it probably looks all right, but we're just gonna change the color and make that white. Now it's not standing out on top of the image as strongly as I would like it to. So we'll address that shortly. And we'll do that by adding a slight background uh, color to the image to separate it from the text. But for now, let's give this a subhead in. So, so you remember me talking about, there's a couple of questions that we need to answer. And essentially this, what this is answering is, you know, what do we do? You know, as a business, what do you do? So in this example, it's high quality football apparel. Next, we wanna talk about what are the benefits? You know, how are people benefiting from your website or your product? So let's add a subsection underneath this title. So head back over to our Elementor widgets. We're gonna go with heading again. Now this time we can change the HTML tag to be a paragraph. Again, we want to change the content here. So let's go with giving yarn. So there we go, pretty cliche, but you, you get the concept. And you know, this is essentially telling the visitor, you know, what we have to offer. So we've, um, you know, we're offering kit to allow young athletes to do well on the field. So again, let's head over to style. We want to increase the size of this a little bit. Yeah, 36 looks okay. I'm, I want to up the weight as well. So we can do that by going to weight and let's change that to 800. And again, color wise, we're going to go with white. So you'll notice again, we can't really see it and we will be addressing that in a minute. Now, because this is the hero section, you know, it's the most prominent part of the page when someone visits, we want a really nice strong call to action. So we're just going to add a very nice clear button. So to do that, let's head back over to our widgets and we have a button option that we can just drag in. As standard, this is how the button's looking. Uh, I'm not personally too pleased with how it looks, so we're gonna change that now. Now I like buttons to be quite large up in the hero section because they need to be quite big and prominent and you know encourage people to click them. We can change our text here and I'm gonna go with shop. So this, it's always important to uh, give a nice descriptive label to your call to action. You know, what is um, what is the intent behind clicking the button? You know, where is it gonna take them? You know, think about things like that. Don't just have um, generic terms like learn more or you know, even shop would be pretty plain. So try and be descriptive. And I wanna add an icon to this. And if I just search right, let's go with that one. So let's add an icon. We wanna change the position to after and I want to increase the spacing between the text and the icon. So now let's focus on changing the color and the style of the button. So typography wise, I want to increase the weight. There we go, that's much better. Font size, I'd probably keep it pretty generic at 18. Here we can change the color of the button by clicking background and I already have color picked this orange here, so we can we can choose a color that you know we're happy with. I've gone with the orange from you know the, the player's trousers here. So once you're happy with that color, select it, and if you click this plus icon here, it will add it to your color picker. So if you want to reference it again later on, you're able to do so. So I'm just going to click this one for now, and I'm happy with that. Now. The button still looks pretty skinny to me. I like it quite nice and large, you know, so people can notice it and are encouraged to click it. So we can achieve that by just adding some padding. Now, if you leave this linked, then you know, it's gonna add padding consistently to every side. So if we just put that as 25 and if we unlink it, what I usually do is have more padding on the left and right and less so on the top and the bottom. So if we change that to 
you know, 15. You can see that that button's you know, fairly well balanced. Now, to have a hover effect, we just need to head up to hover. And this time I'm gonna change the background color to white. And essentially I'm just gonna invert the two colors that are currently on the button. And that is the text color and the background color. So if we change the text color, uh, sorry, the background color to white, we're gonna to wanna to change the text color to our orange. Now, if you hover over it, you'll see that it's inverting. So that indicates that it's a clickable item. Cool, uh, so now let's just add a little bit of spacing between the button and the text above it. So if we head back over to our edit panel and go to advanced, and we wanna add some margin to the top. So remember to unlink it, otherwise it's gonna add margin to every side. And we can just put that as 10, maybe 15, and it's gonna push that away. Another thing I wanna address here is I'm not happy with the line height that's on this text. I feel like it needs uh, a little bit more spacing between. So we can achieve that by going to typography and then just up in the line height. You know, 1.4 is, you know, 1.4 M is usually a good, um, good point to work from. So let's just preview how this is looking. So great, I think, you know, it's pretty clear what we're offering uh, is pretty clear what the benefit of the product is, uh, and then we have a nice call to action that's gonna take us to a store of products. But as I mentioned, we ideally need this to stand away from the noise that's within the image behind. So we're gonna do that by adding a background color. Now if we head back over to our main section that has the background image and click edit that by clicking the six dots, head over to style, and then underneath the background, we have the option for a background overlay. Now I'm gonna go and, and I'm gonna see what a gradient looks like. I'm gonna have a left to right gradient. So the left side is darker than the right side. I really like how vibrant the image is on this right side. So I'm gonna try and maintain that. So if we click gradient, you'll see that it's pre-selected our colors. I'm just gonna change that to black. And then this one, again, I'm gonna change it to black, but I'm gonna lower the opacity. So at the moment it's going from you know top to bottom and we need to change the angle of this. So it's 180 degrees and we're gonna to need to swap it to 90. The gradient's working in the other direction. So there's a couple of ways we can fix this. We can either just add 90 to that and it's gonna flip it around or alternatively, you can swap these uh, color options around if you like. But now you can see already, it's a hell of a lot clearer in seeing what this says and it's gonna be quite nice and clear for the visitor when they land on the page. So what's um, the opacity is at 50%. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. So again, let's preview what that's looking like. Nice, again, I'm happy with that. So now we need to address the question that people might have when they visit and that is, where am I? And we're gonna do that just by adding a simple logo. Let's add a header to the hero section. So we can do that by selecting our section and we want to add a new section and it's gonna add it above. So here, again, I'm gonna go with a split because on the left-hand side, I want the logo and should it, traditionally on the right-hand side, you would have the navigation. So there we go, it's added a new container above. Now let's add an image. So we need to add our site logo and to do that, head back over to our elemental elements and this time we're selecting an image and we can just drag that into our container at the top. Now we need to choose our image. So here our image is added. We can't see it at the moment because the image is white because intentionally I want it to sit on top of this hero section here. But we can change the width of it at least by going to style. Selecting the pixels option, I always find that a little bit easier than dealing with percentages, especially when you move into the responsive design territory. Percentages can get a little bit tricky. I prefer working with fixed width images, but that's my opinion. So feel free to you know size that however you like. Cool. At the moment, I'm just gonna stick it at 300 pixels. Again, we can't really see it. So I think first off, let's deal with this whole uh, separation between the header and the hero. Now there's a couple of ways that we can do it. We can either add, uh, we can either you know create this as a fixed section at the top, or we can use what's called a negative margin on the bottom and it just will pull this container up underneath. So for now, let me just go with that one. So click the six dots of our header container, head over to advanced, and we want to change the margin. So uncheck the link. And here we want to go with negative, let's say 100. 
and as you can see the image has pulled up which is great and if you just up and down on the the mouse uh, sorry if you up and down on the keyboard using the up and down arrows you can change the values of these to you know tidy it up a little bit so at the moment it's 69 we might have to come back in and change this now you'll notice that you know our logo is sitting behind and we can quickly fix this with just some ZN Z indexing now essentially the Z index works from zero now if you just add in one it's it's going to bring your logo in front now for example if this hero section had a Z index as well the Z index of the header would just have to be a higher value than the Z index of your hero section so it's just a little overview of how Z index works so now you can see that our logo is there and we can go back and just tidy it up a little bit so let's click our image by clicking the edit image icon there again if you want to change the width you can do so I'm pretty happy with that size however I would like to align it to the left now visually I feel like there needs to be some spacing you know above the logo so I'm going to add some padding so click the six dots to edit the section and within advance we're going to go to padding now again unlink the values because we only want to apply padding to the top and the bottom I'm going to go with 20 and 20. So now you'll notice that our hero section has been pushed down and that's because we only pulled it up by 69 pixels and at the time that was good enough for the height of our header section but however our header section has now increased thanks to the padding we now need to bring the bottom margin back up like so. So there you go, there's how you build a very nice looking hero section in Elementor. Now obviously in this example we're missing the navigation and you would just place that on the right hand side. So we're answering the questions that you know we need to answer every time someone visits the website. You know, So if they think they're lost, you're telling them where they are. And you do this by telling them who you are in the form of your logo. Also we're telling them what we do and we do this with our main heading here. And then underneath there, we're also telling them, you know, how do people benefit or what are the benefits of, you know, our product? And we're doing that in our subsection here. So here's just an example of a, a strong hero section for your website. We have it full height, which is nice. You can tell that it's visually appealing. Hopefully that works for you. There are other ways that you can go about styling this. You know, maybe if our focal point of the image was slightly different, um, you might want to move this text around. You know, if there wasn't any real focal point of the image, you might want to place your uh, hero content right in the center of the page. You know, so you have options. So hopefully now you know how to build a very nice hero section for your website. So there you have it. It's really quite simple. Just a few important things that you need to include in your hero section and you can answer all of those burning questions that a visitor needs to know when they visit your site. I've shown you how to create a nice hero section for your homepage, how to add a very nice strong compelling title, adding the value proposition, we've added a call to action in the form of a button, and we've created a site header that included a logo. So next week, what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue with this and we're just gonna build up on that hero section a little bit more. We're just gonna add a little bit of parallax, maybe a couple of subtle animations, and just some nice, simple ways to just draw that user in a little bit more to engage with your website and your content. So hopefully you found that valuable. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. It really helps other people find my content. There are loads of other videos on the channel as well that are designed to help you up your web design game and improve your business. So yeah, go check it out. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and hit the bell notification if you want to be notified of other future releases. Also, I'd love to hear how you're getting on with your hero section. So pop me a comment down below and I will get back to you. But for now guys, I'll catch you in the next one.